Wait, what's this about a new Digimon series that brings back the original characters? Yes, please! Today, I'm doing a dub review. Actually, I'm gonna be doing a double whammy here since the two have a small difference that will affect their scores. I'm covering Digimon Adventure Try and Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna. That's right, two reviews in one. Now before we start, I gotta say that these two Digimon series are probably by far the best Digimon dubs that have ever been produced. And whether it's because these series are for an older audience, or because they want to appeal to the fans like me that grew up on it, I don't care. I'm just happy to see a great dub being produced. The stories themselves are a bit hit or miss. I liked some of the ideas in Try, though others could have been done better. Last Evolution is odd because the ending makes it obvious that it's not the ending since they also claim the controversial Zero Two ending is still canon, yet somehow I'm to believe this is the final of them. Yeah, sure. Also, didn't realize Digimon are like Timmy Turner's fairy godparents. Go figure. Anyway, let's start the reviews. 1. Is the opening and ending left intact or dubbed in English? So for Try, the ending songs are all left alone in Japanese and all. But for the strangest reason, the opening butterfly got replaced with a bad techno song that tried to be like the song from that awful movie. Visuals are still all there, and the new song has the same runtime as Butterfly, but it's still a bad song. What makes this even more strange is that Butterfly does play in some episodes, and the dub leaves it unchanged. The only guess I have on why this happened is because Koji Wada, the guy who sang Butterfly, sadly passed away around the time they started working on the dub, and maybe they were having trouble at first with securing the rights to use it as a result, and decided to just replace it for the time being. And by the time they did get the rights, or by the time it, you know, actually played in an episode, they were able to finally secure the rights and they were able to use it. I could be wrong there. Anyway, issues aside, Kizuna also uses a variant of Butterfly as the opening, and this time, the dub does leave it in, as well as the ending, of course. So the answer to if the opening and endings are left, no for try, yes on Last Evolution Kizuna. Number two, is the background music left intact? For the first, and hopefully not last time ever, the English dub of a Digimon series actually keeps the original soundtrack, even the vocal songs. So if you've ever wanted to hear the words Agumon Digivolve 2 Greymon while Braveheart plays in the background go and watch it here I do find it slightly ironic that they left it intact given that the majority of pieces are remixes from the uh, original series but uh which you know got replaced but you know what I'm not complaining regardless the answer is yes for both Three, free of sloppy or unnecessary edits. In all technicalities, neither the movie or try has aired on TV. They had limited theater run, in fact, extra limited for Kizuna thanks to that rotten virus type Digimon called Covidmon. That aside, the releases are entirely uncensored. To my surprise, even the scene in Future where Daigo is covered in blood before his gruesome death was left alone without a drop of blood removed. Even the Japanese credits that play during their replacement song remain untouched. The only change that gets made at all, inconsistently I might add, is during the evolution sequence for the ones with different names such as Magna Angemon and Mega Kabuteriamon, who, you know, have different English names, and when they remember to, the uh, English names are shown on the Digivice instead of the Japanese ones. And like I said, sometimes they forget to even do that. So other than the brief text edit, which looks fine, totally has the same fonts and everything, couldn't even tell the difference if you weren't paying attention, 
Anyway, so, given that that's the only edit, and even that's a small one that they kind of had to do, so can't fault them against that one? So, for both series, the answer is yes. Number four, free of heavy Americanization. Digimon has always been surprisingly open about being Japanese, and this series and movie is no exception. Yes to both. Number five, uncut version available to the public in some way. As I said, the series is only presented uncut. The DVD even includes the Japanese audio track option. This is a first for a Digimon series, and I hope it's not the last. Yes on both. Number six, good voices. Alright, so here's the deal. Given that the time frame between the original series and this one is quite long, expecting everyone in the original cast to return is quite unreasonable. But the good news is that they got lots of the original cast to return, including Ty's voice actor Joshua Seth, who even came out of retirement to reprise his role. Now as for the recast, in Try, Kari was recast because the original voice, Laura Miller, is no longer able to do non-union work, and is likely far too busy being the voice of Lisa over on The Loud House. Good show, by the way. The replacement for Kari does a good job sounding like Laura's vo character, but older, so it's not a problem. The next replacement for Tri is the brothers Matt and TK, who are now voiced by Johnny Young Bosch and Vic Mignogna. Bosch manages to sound right as TK, while Mignana sounds like, well, Mignana. If I were to guess why they chose Vic to play Matt, it's probably because Matt's still part of a band and they wanted someone who has a good singing voice like Vic does. So I don't really blame them for that. Some other minor recasts take place, but you hardly notice them. It's a shame Magnan Jamon lost his, uh... Clint Eastwood voice that he used to have, but oh well. As for Kizuna, the cast from Try all reprised their roles except for Vic Mignogna because of the controversy surrounding him, which I admit I have very mixed feelings about, but I won't be talking about that on here. So anyway, other than that, everyone else reprised their role. And uh, ironically enough, Matt's new voice actor actually kind of sounds more close to the original one than Vic did. Go figure. Anyway, as far as the Zero Two cast coming in, the Mons get a bit of a recast due to the original voices either being dead or retired, and of them, the most noticeable change being Armadillo Mons, who is kind of derpy sounding now. Not sure why they went with that option, but I do know the original voice was, is deceased, so can't be helped. And as for the uh, kids themselves, Ken is the only one who actually got to reprise his role, and Davis almost got to, but due to issues involving home setup and COVID, he was unable to. But anyway, that aside, the uh, adult kids that have been replaced all managed to sound decent enough, or at least convincing, like, what they might sound like at that age. Same goes for the original cast, of course. So, the original cast all does great. The replacements manage to sound like what those characters might sound like post-puberty, so... It, you can justify all of them. With that in mind, I would say that, yeah, they'd have a pretty good cast for in both cases. So, yes to both! Number seven. Script handled well and free of obnoxious jokes added in. No excessively bad translations and otherwise unwanted rewrites. Unlike previous dubs, which were notorious for adding lame jokes into every serious situation, this time around the scripts are taken very seriously. With the small exception of maybe one or two callbacks to the original, like having Izzy say prodigious, everything else is accurate. I'm gonna give them this one. Yes to both. Number 8. All episodes dubbed, aired, and released to the public so far. No episodes skipped, merged, or otherwise missing. Let's see, there's six episodes, or movies if you will, of Try in the Japanese version, and six of them in the dub. As for Kizuna, it's literally just a movie. The shorts don't really count since those were just promotional material anyway. Point is, I'd say the answer to both would be yes. 9. Free of name changes. Due to consistency with the original series, all adaptation name changes are maintained for consistency. 
Although I suppose it's worth noting that new characters such as Mako do get to keep their Japanese names the same. Regardless, name changes are still name changes, so I'm gonna have to say no to both of those. Number 10, overall is it watchable? Honestly, I found both of these dubs for Digimon to be very well presented and by far the best work they've done to this day. Yes to both. So, final scores for Digimon Adventure Try is a solid 8 out of 10, while Digimon Adventure Last Evolution Kizuna gets a 9 out of 10. Wow! So, other than being consistent with name changes and that minor issue with Try's opening, this is a really good dub. I can honestly say that these dubs are pro not only the best dub Digimon has ever had, but I would say that they're every bit on par with the Japanese version, if not better. So yeah, you guys did a great job. Um, and I really hope that this is not the last time we get a good dub for Digimon. So in the hopes that this is still the case, I'm hoping that we continue to get good dubs like this for Digimon, and maybe if they're nice enough we'll get at least one more series that fills the gap between Kizuna and Zero Two's controversial ending. But you know, the one that they still think is canon. God could close that gap one way or another. Anyway, point is, let's hope for this dub the dubs to continue. Good job on these ones. That's my review. Wow.